So I received a comment on the Live Ready YouTube channel saying that within two weeks I would run out of fuel and resources in any bug out situation. This is 100% true for any person who would find themselves in a survival egress situation. Which is why we progress from bug out gear to primitive skills at some point. It's also why this channel focuses both on preparedness as well as primitive survival skills. So I'm at my base camp at the moment and what I've got here is a puff adder which is a very venomous South African snake. I'm going to show you how to field dress a venomous snake, particularly a puff adder, so that you can transition from having stored food and preparedness supplies to your primitive skills in order to sustain you long term in the bush. I'm Clarice, welcome to the Live Ready channel. It is creepy. Bugging out can't just be you having all the gear set up and having a base camp set up. You need to have the primitive skills to help you to survive long term in whatever scenario you find yourself in. So I'm just starving him of oxygen. I'm a little far from his head. I'm worried if I reach down now with my knife, he might actually be able to bite me. Okay, I'm going to let him go and then catch him a little closer to the head. Okay. No, he's really not going anywhere. This is very scary because this is quite a venomous snake. Okay. Whatever you do, do not take the pressure off the stick. And I have so much adrenaline <laughs> rushing through me right now. So I don't want to just cut the head off and I need to be careful of actually slicing into the venom glands because I don't want venom all over the place. Um, if you eat venom, generally your stomach will actually digest the venom. Um, but you also don't want it all over your hands, especially if you've got um, holes or sores in your hands or so. Okay, I think this guy is dead. But snakes can sometimes seem dead and then not be, to be very sure. So like I said, puff adders are very venomous snakes and they are incredibly fast strikers as well. So this is not something that I would do other than for educational purposes, um, nor would I recommend that anybody go around trying to catch a snake for the sake of it. But if you do find yourself in a survival situation where you are really desperate for food, snakes are actually really high protein sources of food. And then if you are going to use an animal as food, try to put it out of its misery really quickly. Don't let the animal suffer. So for skinning any sort of animal, I like to have just a tub underneath them um, to collect whatever comes off of the animal the reason why is I don't like leaving blood and stuff lying around my campsite. Um, it means that it attracts other animals to my camp um, just because of the smell of the guts and blood. Okay, for venomous snakes, um, the venom sacs usually sit just behind the head. So I would go at least three, four centimeters behind the head. That's around right about where the venom sacs sit um, or the glands sit. And I would go a good couple centimeters behind that. Anatomically people differ um, so animals also differ anatomically so you just want to be safe. So ideally for skinning any animal you would want a really sharp knife it just makes things a whole lot easier. Now I'm going to go a good cent 10 centimeters down from like the top of the head um, there is a nice fang sticking out there which I don't want to get my fingers um, caught up on over there so I'm going to avoid the fangs. Um, snakes do sometimes tend to like contract very long after you've killed them as well. So I'm going to go like a good this is probably about 10-15 centimeters down maybe about 10. I'm going to just make an incision so I'm peeling the skin away from the body because then I know I'm not going to cut into the gut and I know that I'm not going to cut into any sort of venom glands. Um, I'm just going to make an incision there okay I'm going to cut down a little bit just to give myself a little bit of room and now what I do is I just cut um, circumferentially around the snake. This is not my favorite pastime by the way. 
I wouldn't make a good handbag dealer. I'm not very good at like keeping skins intact and stuff. And then just peel it off. If it gets stuck anywhere, it might just be because it gets a bit tight. You can just release it or you can just release the fascia and the connective tissue around the skin. All right, and when we get down here, this will be bladder and bowel that's now sagged down um, because we've actually killed the snake. So everything has relaxed and it's dead and it just like sags right down there. And I just peel the skin right off. You can cut the last end of the tail off. We're not gonna use that anyway. And there's like snake pee and snake poo all over the place here. And then drop all your excess bits in the bucket. So the parts of the snake that we do actually want is just this white flesh here. Everything else has to go. Um, so what I can do is I'm just going to cut the intestines up here. Mind where your fingers are so you don't cut yourself. So this that I've cut here is basically the trachea that'll be in the front and the esophagus will be sitting at the back there. But that you can see is spine over there and that's flesh over there. Peel all of that away. I don't know what this is some of the other tendon that keeps everything all all together that is quite gross and all of the intestines just come away like that oh, I was hoping that would come free relatively easily there we go oh and you can absolutely smell it for survival purposes what we actually need is a lot of fat and a lot of protein. Um, so if you can harvest some of the fats from the intestinal, intestinal like organs or from the body itself or from the skin of any animal that you cull for survival purposes, that's actually preferred. Um, in this case, we are two weeks into bugging out. We've just run out of resources. So we are going to discard all of the intestines and the skin. I've got the snake clear of all of its intestines. Um, I don't have any venom on the parts that I'm going to eat and what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to put it down on something and I'm going to cut the head off and then this is the part that I'm going to eat. I'm also going to rinse it with a bit of water just for the sake of if there was any like intestinal fluids or urine or feces or anything like that or venom that got onto the, the parts that I actually want to cook and eat um, I would actually be rinsing it off mostly with some water and also just because I'm now full of blood and guts. I can see that there aren't any venom sacs here, so I can actually just go and sever that. Okay, and I've got my food for the night. Right, this comes right down to my tap, which is over here. I can rinse my knife, which is full of blood and guts as well. And I just rinse my snake, which is dinner for tonight. Right, so my snake, now having been skinned can go in a tupperware in my fridge until i am ready to cook it so as far as the snake's head and anything that might contain venom goes it's best to actually discard it so the best would be to bury it and put a rock on top of it to make sure that nobody accidentally steps on the head um, and then for the snake itself if you planned really well when you were preparing to bug out, you would have brought some olive oil along, which is what I've done. Right, so if you manage to get some of the other oil from the surrounding area, you can use that. I don't want to cook it too hot, but it is nice if it seals. Pretty much any sort of um, gay meat will tend to dry out quite quickly. I'm going to seal it off nicely with some oil and then I'm going to cook it relatively slowly. You want to cook this for about a half an hour at not too high a temperature so I'm going to lower the temperature of my fire shortly. If you have some salt around you can use that if you've desalinated water in your survival situation um, the salt from the desalination process that water can be dried out and you can use that salt as well. In survival you your body actually does need the salt in order to function properly um, so really good to have some salt in your diet um, irrespective of where you get it from whether it's from the ocean or from your supplies um, you do need salt okay. cook 
making the puffy. So medium rare doesn't work if you're cooking a puff adder. It has to be absolutely well done. If you find yourself in need, whether it be in everyday life or in the wilderness, remember that you can ask God for the things that you need. In Matthew 7 verse 7 to 8, he says, Seek and you shall find. Keep on asking and you'll be given what you're asking for. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened. And we should come to him with our needs. He knows what they are, but we can be specific and we can ask him for the things that we desire or the things that we need. So a snake, when it's cooked, the flesh should come away as like flaky white flesh. Then you know that the snake is done. So that right there is perfectly cooked with a little bit of char. So we're gonna add some eye drops to this business. These are eye drops, by the way, and we can have dinner. Here we go, bon appetit. Mmm, it's good. It's not quite like chicken, um, but that would probably be the closest description. Similar to chicken. If you've liked this video, remember to hit like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. I post some more of the everyday live ready stuff on there. You might even find a hint or two of what's to come on the YouTube channel in future. And until the next time, live ready. A contraband of choice. <laughs>